Now, it's not easy to get an accurate head count on a very important U.S. population, pets. But the American Veterinary Medical Association figures that more than 38 percent of U.S. homes have at least one dog. Now, more than a quarter of homes have at least one cat. Now, we can't get into the numbers of birds, fish, lizards, or ferrets, but clearly a lot of U.S. homes depend on the kind of unconditional love that pets bring into our lives. But with that joy comes a lot of responsibility and a very important person, your vet. So joining us now with more is veterinarian Karen Fine. She just released a new book called The Other Family Doctor. A veterinarian explores what animals can teach us about love, life, and mortality. Welcome, Dr. Fine. You are a holistic veterinarian. Tell me what, what that means. So I treat animals, we call it integrative medicine. I treat animals with Western medicine, but I also use traditional Chinese medicine when warranted and when the, when the owner wants to use that. And you've written that people uh, often ask, well, your patients can't talk, so how do you know what's wrong when a pet comes in? That's a great question, and that's one that I get a lot. And we pay, veterinarians, we pay a lot of attention to the animal themselves, but we also have to ask a lot of questions of their caretakers. And you believe that our fur babies possess skills and senses that, that we don't, and animals can teach us so much about love and grief. What other kinds of things do you think pets could teach us? I think they can teach us about accepting our mortality. So what I see from animals, and I've been present at so many of my patients' deaths, and what I see with animals is I don't feel that they're afraid of death before, before it happens. They're not worrying about it. But when they're actually in the process of dying, I see that they're accepting it. And a lot of times people find that their animals are peaceful and that they feel ready. And I feel that they're listening to their body. So as their body's breaking down, they're receiving that information and they're accepting it. Sort of like when an animal is pregnant and say a dog is about to have puppies, they, no one's telling them this is what you need to do when you get these certain signals or this is how to prepare. They listen to their bodies and their bodies tell them what to do. Also, like when a baby animal is born, like a little kitten, how do they know, you know what to do? They listen to their instincts. That's fascinating. And you don't just care for pets, but also their people, especially when there is a health crisis with a pet. What kind of emotional toll does that take uh, on vets? You're dealing with, again, animals and their owners. Yeah, I think a lot of people have these really profound bonds with their animals. And I've heard a lot of people say that they were more upset when their animal died than they were when a, a, a human family member died. And that's, that's really not uncommon. And when you live with your animals, they're part of your daily routine. So it's, it's really not that surprising. And we're so close to them in so many ways. So people, I think, really get, get very distressed. And it's what's called a disenfranchised grief in our culture. It's not talked about very often. It's not very well supported by our society. It's hard to really say, I, I need to take a, a day off of work because I'm grieving my animal. Um, you know, some people understand and some people laugh. So it's, it's a different, difficult situation. I think not everybody really talks about the depth of their feelings. And based on your book, you know, despite the expense, the care, the chewed shoes, the hairballs, life is it's just better with pets, right? It is better with pets. I always want to have pets in my life. I think it's such a wonderful thing to watch creatures of another species and interact with them and love them and be loved by them. Dr. Karen Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for having me.